Limited is an American multinational corporation. We all know that Apple achieved widespread success with its iPod Touch and iPad products, which introduced innovations in mobile phones, portable music players, and personal computers, respectively. And for Apple, it is quite important to maintain this success and popularity. One of Apple's biggest key issues will be the rate that technology is growing and the ability to keep up with and also with the prices at which their products are sold for. They are faced with constant new arrivals at prices that are more affordable, especially in today's economy where everybody is looking for ways to save money. They are also faced with having to maintain their marketing relationship building and brand management techniques as they spread into a much wider market, gaining a much larger customer base that includes a more diverse customer. As we all know, in this modern era where technology and the entertainment industry is constantly evolving, the question that arises is, how will Apple be able to maintain the reputation of its brand and their exclusive design? Will it be easier for Apple to constantly be able to put something new out in the market that will keep catching their consumer's attention? Hello all, and welcome to the lecture on Critical Factors in Managing Technology, where we shall understand how any company faces critical issues in managing technology and how they will be successful in solving those issues. After the lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the creativity factor. Define the link between science and technology. Discuss creativity and innovation. Explain the technology price relationship. Understand the vision to change strategy. Explain how to manage change. Discuss leaders versus followers. Considering that technological changes are continuously creating new challenges and opportunities for new products, services, processes, as well as organizational development and industrial diversification, these opportunities need to be captured and converted into value through Effective and Dynamic Technology Management, or TM. The Effective and Dynamic Management of Technologies require a set of skills and knowledge where the use of TM tools plays a key role. However, the literature is silent about TM tools. The TM discipline has a history of over 50 years, but it's becoming a self-sustained discipline that has taken place in the last 20 years. This sub-management discipline is still struggling to agree on a few key pillars forming the body of TM. Technology impacts organizational design, such as by enabling virtual structures or a more analytical view to aspects of structure. You may have also heard that despite the thousands of computer science grad students graduating from colleges and universities around the world, only a small number are actually employable at most organizations. Why is this and what can we do to change it? One of the root causes of the shortage of employable graduates is simply because of the difference between what schools and colleges teach versus what students actually end up doing on the job. If you ask a computer science student what their jobs might be like when they graduate, they might tell you they're excited by the idea of programming new software or maybe even fixing computer networks and hardware. But of course what happens in most organizations is quite different from that. I think the way we teach computer science today is makeover. Today things are taught in an unnecessarily complicated way and the focus is very largely on computer programming. Whilst that is the very foundation, it takes a lot more to succeed in this profession. The goal of this series of videos is to convey through simple explanations the big picture of what really goes on in an organization and that it takes a lot more than knowing how to program software to succeed and to move up in your career and to be successful in this profession. So let's do things a bit differently here. Let's break down the whole subject into small bits and study each area through simple explanations and then put it all together so you can see the big picture. The format of these videos has been inspired by some wonderful work done by the Khan Academy and I hope you get a few minutes to visit it. 
let's stay let's start by looking at the types of things that computer programmers make there are many but broadly they can be categorized into three main buckets operating systems the smallest bubble employs the fewest number of people in the industry examples include things like windows 7 mac which help run your computers and laptops and software like android that run your smartphones and tablets Embedded software are things that run inside machines, just cars, to control the engine. They help planes to fly and land safely and keep food in cold in your refrigerator. User software is the largest bubble and represents things like websites, business applications, such as those used by your phone company to calculate your monthly phone bill, personal applications such as listening to music, typing documents, creating spreadsheets. Let's call this whole group applications. We will focus on this category of software as it is the one that employs the greatest number of people and also faces the highest number of challenges. So what do computer professionals actually do? We are now ready to take a quick peek into answering that question. They help create new applications or customize existing applications and when they're ready help users to use it. They enhance it to make it better and after many months or years of using it, they help to replace or retire it. Let's discuss the concept of the creativity factor. In the beginning of the 21st century, invention, innovation and creativity were the most important keywords that have been emphasized in the education and society-wide all over the world. Creativity was historically emphasized in several reports, including the Technology for All Americans, or TFAA project, the Report of International Technology Education Association, or ITEA, and SCAN's report in the USA, core skill in England, and key competencies in Germany and Australia. Invention. Invention is the creation of a product or introduction of a process for the first time. Thomas Edison was an inventor. The list of best inventions changes from person to person. It can also vary accordingly to country and region. People tend to believe that their favorite or most used items are some of the best inventions ever made, and they might very well be. Even though everyone's list of the best invention varies, there are some items that generally appear on a large number of lists. These items are well used and they are considered among the best inventions ever created. Innovation. Innovation happens when someone improves on or makes a significant contribution to something that has already been invented. Steve Jobs was an innovator. Innovation implies the creation of something new. In this regard, innovation is often equated with invention. However, the two definitions of innovation and invention have been evolving. Steps toward innovation are conduct an analysis of the market environment, customer wants and needs and competitors, be open to new ideas and adaptive to change, Develop a strategic responsive plan which includes innovation as a key business process across the entire business. Leadership and innovation. Train and empower employees to think innovatively from the top down. Inspirational leadership and motivation is what drives innovation in business. Connect with customers and employees to generate ideas for improving processes, products, and services both internally and externally. Seek advice. Utilize available resources, business advisors, grants, and assistance to drive innovation in business. This may include seeking intellectual property or IP protection for commercialization of ideas. Um, before we jump into various how-to methods, I just want to take a minute uh, since it's a very abstract and um, you know uh, used in different ways the word innovation. Um, I'm currently using them to mean that an innovation is something which 
um, has a problem which an idea solves, which gets implemented and it benefits, right? So it's an application of new ideas to solve problems resulting in benefits of users. So for example, um, when you ask a frame a question saying, how do we provide clean drinking water at low cost? Then, you know, an answer such as the Swatch uh, product becomes an innovation. Similarly, a Tirupati temple uh, might ask a question, how might we uh, provide a better experience for the visitors? And to that, a response to that question, you have the token system um, which is being used. And I would say that is another type of innovation as well. Let's now talk about the link between science and technology. A logical or natural association between two or more things gives the relation between them. To find out the proper relation between science, technology, and society, one must have a clear idea about each of them. Curiosity of human minds developed a systematic way to establish the relation between different natural phenomena by making observations and experiments. The emergence of technology was made possible by the development of the rational faculty, the tool and the creation of the machine. Science. Generally, science is a system of acquiring knowledge based on proper methods in order to organize a body of knowledge gained through research. Technology. The practical application of knowledge, especially in a particular area. It refers to tools and machines that may be used to solve real-world problems. Society. A society or a human society is a group of people related to each other through persistent relations. Relationship. Infrastructures in the society have developed with the help of science and technology. The invention of the telephone and radio services has expanded human communication. Society cannot exist without the industry that one has today. Types of innovation. Innovation is often in the eye of the beholder. What may be new and radical for one person may be old news for another. The four P's model provides a powerful tool for such analysis. It builds on the hypothesis that successful innovation is essentially about positive change and it puts forward four broad categories where such change can take place. Product innovation. Perhaps the most commonly understood form of innovation is that which introduces or improves a product or service or a change in what is offered to end users. Process innovation. Innovations can also focus on processes through which products are created or delivered. Because so many of the products used in relief settings are initially developed for non-relief contexts, a natural focus for humanitarian innovation is to consider how an existing product might be used in resource-poor or rapidly changing settings. Position innovation. The third focus of innovation involves repositioning the perception of an established product or process in a specific context. Position-based innovations refer to changes in how a specific product or process is perceived symbolically and how it is used. Paradigm innovation. The final P relates to innovation that defines or redefines the dominant paradigms of an organization or an entire sector. Paradigm-based innovations relate to the mental models which shape what an organization or business is about. Creativity and innovation. There was a lot of confusion surrounding creativity and innovation. Creative types in particular claim that creativity and innovation cannot be measured. Performance, however, demands measurement so that one can identify what success looks like. Creativity versus innovation. The main difference between creativity and innovation is the focus. Creativity is about unleashing the potential of the mind to conceive new ideas. 
Those concepts could manifest themselves in any number of ways, but most often they become something one can see, hear, smell, touch, or taste. Managing innovation. Because creativity and innovation are often confused, it's long been assumed that one cannot force innovation within an organization. It is either there or it's not. The introduction of a common language for innovation design thinking enables organizations to better measure milestones in their innovative efforts. Companies to model. Organizations serious about fostering innovation have to wrestle with two main issues, risk taking and failure aversion. All innovation involves risk and all risks include the possibility of failure. Bringing innovation to market. It is tough to get consumers to adopt innovations and it's getting harder all the time. As more markets take on the characteristics of networks, once reliable tools for introducing new products and services do not work as well as they used to. Now let's talk about the technology price relationship. Relationship pricing is a strategy of setting prices based on a consumer's relationship with a given institution. The more business someone does with you, the more benefits you give them. Why even think about relationship pricing? If one is having a hard time selling one's products, then one should look at relationship pricing. If people are leaving an institution, that is another sign to look at relationship pricing. The time factor. A central challenge for empirical studies of price variation is controlling for unobserved differences in quality. This challenge is particularly relevant for tests of factor price equality, where workers and other factors of production can vary substantially in terms of productivity across regions and industries. The Osborne Computer Company. Released in June of 1981 by the Osborne Computer Corporation, the Osborne One is considered to be the first true portable full-featured computer. It includes all the components required to be a completely useful and operational computer system. Two built-in floppy drives which hold 91K of data each with floppy disk storage compartments a detachable full-size keyboard with numeric keypad, a built-in, albeit small, monochrome CRT monitor, runs on the CPM operating system, the most popular operating system at the time. Now let's explore the vision to change strategy. A strategic vision is a broad term used to describe one of the essential elements of an overall strategic planning endeavor. Essentially, a vision is the identification of the ultimate aim or purpose of a business. Within this context, the strategic vision helps to set the parameters for the development of planning specific steps to go about making that vision come true, since it establishes the general direction that the business will pursue. A workable vision clearly looks beyond where the company is today and determines where the owners want the company to be at some point in the future. IBM and the development of the PC. IBM stands for International Business Machines, the largest computer company in the world today. IBM has been responsible for numerous inventions having to do with computers. IBM background. The company incorporated in 1911, starting as a major producer of punch card tabulating machines. During the 1930s, IBM built a series of calculators, the 600s, based on their punch card processing equipment. The founder of IBM was a devout follower of Hitler. Thomas J. Watson had supplied his punch card computers and IBM technicians to the Nazis for use in the death camps. Tattoos on camp victims were IBM human identification numbers which fed into the computers. IBM had used similar punch card systems as early as 1928 in a Jamaican race mixing study. 
the first real computers were literally invented by a eugenicist for eugenics. The very first thing that the Nazis did when they took power in 32 was to hire IBM to reconstruct their census. So using essentially computers, they were punch card computers, they were mechanical computers that could tabulate and analyze information on these punch cards. And what the Nazis did was they, they created a very, very detailed census so that they could cross-reference their population for all sorts of variables. For example, whether someone was Jewish and wealthy and from the East or half Jewish and from Germany. And what they did with this extremely detailed portrait of their population was to initiate the Holocaust in a totally rationalized way that was deemed by the Nazis to be more palatable to Germans. So what they did was they, the very first Jews that they went after, after going after homosexuals and communists and, and gypsies, they went after wealthy Jews who had immigrated from Eastern Europe. Since this was a group that your average German anti-Semite felt least connected to, after they'd rounded them up, they went for wealthy German Jews and then people of half-Jewish descent. And they did their roundup very, very rationally and methodically using these computers. The numbers on Holocaust survivors' arms, those tattooed numbers, are essentially the barcodes that were linked to the Hollerinth machines that IBM leased to the Nazis. And they had these in every death camp. They had them all over the place. They were constantly using this computer technology and the information they had gleaned in their census to manage the whole project of liquidating the The IBM 701 General Purpose Computers the year 1953 saw the development of IBM's 701 EDPM, which, according to IBM, was the first commercially successful general purpose computer. Microsoft and the Internet In the beginning, Microsoft was just one computer tucked under a table at the end of a long hallway. It was designed to test Microsoft's first 32-bit Windows implementation of TCP/IP, the software plumbing in Windows that enables internet communications. Now let's discuss how to manage change. The major advances in technology that have emerged over the last several decades have had an impact on virtually every aspect of modern life, and the hospitality industry has also been affected by these changes. While keyboards and microchips are probably among the last thing that guests want to think about as they dip into a lounge in a penthouse suite, hospitality industry insiders know that modern technology plays a big part in keeping things on track behind the scenes. From the back of the house order management systems that help chefs keep their plates straight, to the reservation systems that ensure that a soft bed will be waiting for a weary traveler at the end of a long day on the road. Some strategies to help one and one's team survive and even thrive in the process. Provide as much advanced warning as possible. Recruit a group of staff facilitators. Begin system training in a low pressure environment. Have a plan B and maybe even a plan C. Productivity, effectiveness, and competitiveness. The shortcoming of the traditional understanding of productivity is that it overlooks the nature of competitiveness. Traditional paradigm of productivity. Productivity is a hot topic in Western markets like Australia. Aging populations coupled with low fertility rates and growing social costs only allow one way to maintain current lifestyle levels, an increase in productivity, paradigm shift to competitive productivity. In Western organizations, an increasing number of work hours are spent in time-consuming meetings, committee work, and advisory boards, which do not always result in productive outcomes. Leaders versus followers. It's hard to distinguish the leaders from the followers these days. So many leaders are playing it safe, holding themselves, their teams, 
and their organizations back because they choose to follow instead of lead. Leadership is about taking risks, seeing opportunities that others do not see, unleashing the passion, being entrepreneurial, working with a generous purpose, and strengthening the promise of a better workplace culture. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Technology has also impacted supply chain management, which is the management of a network of interconnected businesses involved in the provision of product and service packages required by the end customers in a supply chain. Technological creativity cannot be divided strictly, but one can easily find from human history that one certainly has technological creativity based on technological thinking and technological activity, which directly have brought so many kinds of revolutions in human history. Innovation happens when someone improves on or makes a significant contribution to something that has already been invented. Steve Jobs was an innovator. The process of translating an idea or invention into a good or service that creates value or for which customers will pay. Science discovers fundamental information about how the universe works. Technology is the practical application of that information or knowledge.